We're Aaron and Brandon, an engaged couple who were traveling the world full time until the pandemic hit and abruptly brought us back home to New York. With the uncertainty when we could travel internationally again, we had to figure out what we should do next. So in the beginning of May, we bought a Ram Promaster and decided to convert a cargo van into a camper van and attempt a road trip to every national park in the continental United States. Over three months, we custom designed and built this entire van to fit our every need. So we wanna let you guys know that we have some exciting news that we'll be announcing towards the end of the video. If you really can't wait to find out what that is, you could skip forward and then reverse back to watch the rest of the van build, but we're gonna get started. Welcome to our van, Ronnie. Come on in and we'll give you a tour. We'll start in the cab. This is a 2019 Ram Promaster. We bought it slightly used. It had 7,000 miles on it and she's been a champ ever since. Up here we have our swivel seat that can swivel around so that when we're hanging out in the van we have an extra seating spot. We also have some shelving unit up here, which provides a lot of extra storage. One simple thing we added that has proved to be very beneficial is this basket in the middle of both seats. We throw a lot of things in there while we're driving, like snacks, cameras, books. For example, this has been our lifeline throughout our national park road trip. I basically am reading it every day. Thank you, Michael Joseph Oswald. <laughs> We also have these curtains so that when we're sleeping, we don't have any peeping toms looking in. Coming over to the kitchen, we have a two burner propane stove. We also have a fruit hammock, which is kind of a given if you're a van lifer. I love a fruit hammock. Brandon made fun of me in the beginning. He thought we didn't need it. During the van build process, Brandon was in charge and he was the lead engineer on everything. I don't wanna say I doubted him, but when he would say that he was gonna build the cabinets himself or build the kitchen area himself, I was like, what do you mean? You can build cabinets? Because I mean, he had never built cabinets before, but I am so impressed by these cabinets. I mean, I'm so impressed by everything in the van, but sometimes I think about it and I'm like, wow, we built these and we built this. Not only is it an amazing tiny home, it's something that we built and crafted together and it was such a roller coaster of emotions that I wouldn't change it for the world. Here is where we keep all of our dry food. It honestly seems like it's the perfect amount. We do go to the store a couple times a week because we never buy in bulk. We're not taking Costco trips because there's nowhere to really put it. Over here, we keep all of our kitchen equipment, plates, bowls, pans, pots. We've kind of figured out a system so everything stacks correctly and it's most efficient. Brenda was in charge of figuring out the practical, functional ways that we're gonna actually maneuver and have lights, plumbing, everything like that in the van. I was in charge of the design, all of the elements that made this place pretty and cozy and feel like home. So I started off with a color scheme of blues, greens, whites, beiges, natural, neutral feels. I wanted this tiny home to really feel cozy and warm after hiking all day or being out in the national parks. This really does feel like a little oasis for us when we get home. We added this Portuguese tile inspired backsplash. It's not actually tile, it's peel and stick from Wayfair. Honestly, I love how it came out and I wanted to keep everything mostly white and neutral, just a minimalistic feel, but I did want a couple of accents to bring some character to the van. One thing that was our baby the entire time, our vision behind creating this space was the butcher block. I knew from the beginning that I wanted to use butcher block 
So we bought this eight foot piece that became our countertop and our table for the lagoon table. We went through an entire process of treating it, which involved sanding it, polying it, sanding it again, polying it again. This is a labor of love right here. So I absolutely love the butcher block. I think it really adds character. It gives it a warm, cozy feeling. Now onto the table. This is our lagoon mount, which we have absolutely loved since we've gotten it. Right now we have two placemats on it more guacamole and avocados because that's us. This lagoon mount can rotate 360 degrees in all directions. So it's great for working, eating, and when we have the swivel seat out, we could put the table right in between us, one person sitting on the bench, one person sitting on the swivel seat, and we could have dinner together. Here is our really beautiful bench. This fabric is from Schumacher, which my friend Gab got us samples from. So a lot of the fabric you're gonna see in the van is all samples from Schumacher. My mom and I actually built these cushions and pillow together to customize this bench, which we have storage underneath. Inside the bench, we keep things like shoes and clothes you don't wear all the time because it is a little bit tricky to get full access to the bench storage. All you really have to do is take off the cushion. We have our mini fridge, which has been working out very well for us. You can't store a whole lot, so you just gotta eat your leftovers the next day. We also have our draw with the soft clothes. I love a good soft clothes, so that makes me happy. Now over to our sink. This is a Ruvati sink. We bought it on Amazon and I've actually been in love with it ever since. It comes with this cutting board. When you have a limited amount of counter space, it's really nice to have an extra space that you could cut or also just an extra space where your cutting board goes because as you can see, everything has its place in this van. This sink is 50 inches by 15 inches. A lot of van lifers have complained about not having enough sink space. So we wanted to make sure that we got kind of like a normal size sink. And some of my friends who live in New York City apartments said that our sink and our counter and our kitchen just in general is nicer than their own. So this is kind of as much space that you would have in a New York City apartment. <laughs> we also have a water purifier because we get our water from different kinds of campsites and random spots. So we wanna make sure that wherever we're getting our water, we can purify it and it's healthy and safe to drink. We added this window on the side of the van. That was one of our first things that we ever added in addition to both Max Air fans. Now we have a nice breeze coming in through the window. You wouldn't think it makes that big of a difference, but it really does. And to have a cargo van have passenger plates, at least in the state of New York, you need to have a window on the driver's side and a stationary bed or stationary seats. So that's how we got around getting our passenger plates on our cargo van. And lastly, we have the storage underneath the sink. Here we think of as our bathroom storage, toothpaste, deodorant, things like that. And here we think of our kitchen where we keep our cleaning supplies, sponges, things to that effect. One thing we both love to do is cook. So we have a spice rack that we put on the door because you really have to take advantage of every little space you have in the van. Just like our dish towels are hooked up over here. We have our gray water tank, koozies, trash bags, Ziploc bags, plastic wrap, things like that. And our propane tank is behind our garbage can. Among the many things we store underneath the bed, the toilet is one of them. So we went with the Nature's Head composting toilet, which has worked out absolutely perfectly for us. We keep the toilet just under here. And then you do your business, but you don't want to see that. If you haven't noticed, our walls and our ceiling are all shiplap, which is which a lot of HGTV shows, they love their shiplap. So instead of doing wood for the paneling on the walls and the ceiling, I decided to go for white to brighten up the space, make it feel more open, give it a cleaner, crisp vibe. 
We decided to get a full-sized foam mattress for the van. We actually had to cut it four inches because it didn't quite fit lengthwise. We're both not terribly tall, so we fit really well, and we actually prefer this bed to other beds. A little secret spot we have here in the van. You might be wondering, where do you keep your laundry? I'll show you. We have a big hole right here, so whenever we have laundry, we put it down the chute, and then our laundry is stored underneath the bed. When it's time to do laundry, we just go into the bed and take it out. Our last two cabinets is where we keep our clothes. I keep mine here, and Brandon keeps his here. We decided to go with regular packing cubes. I do have one basket in here, but honestly, the packing cubes have been working out really well because you know where you keep your socks and underwear and things like that, and you just take out that cube. And yes, girls out there might be thinking, that's where you keep your clothes. I keep my clothes also under the storage and above the shelf. This is just one spot for them. So for our power, we installed five separate outlets throughout the van, four inside and one off the garage. We also installed USB outlets. We put in eight LEDs in the ceiling. We put four in each circuit and the backlights we can actually dim, which are really nice. We also put in a switch for the lights under the kitchen. We got a wireless LTE router, which runs off of Verizon, which has been really useful. We got this through Nomad Internet. We pay a monthly fee, but it has been absolutely amazing to just have Wi-Fi when we're in the van and we can work and upload videos, whatever else. Really highly suggest Nomad Internet. By the way, we'll put the links for all these things in the description below so that if you're building out your own van, you can find all of them below. On the roof, we have two solar panels. They're each 200 watt panels for the first month and a half. This was our only power source and we were able to get by as long as we didn't have several cloudy or rainy days in a row. For security, we added in this camera, which when we're away from the van, we can turn it on and we can access a live feed of the van at any point. So if we leave the van in a city and go out to a restaurant or something, we can check back in on Ronnie because the last thing we want is for all of our possessions to be stolen. We've got these bug nets installed on both doors, which at first Aaron was resistant to because they don't look nice, but they're very practical. And if we didn't have them, we probably would never open up the doors. We've got our nice curtains here. There's our poke inside. In the garage, we've got all of our storage, including our water tank, all of our electrical, our paddle board, and some winter clothes and chairs and a table. A lot of different things, whatever we need, we shove it back here and we find a place for it. But to give you the full tour, we have to empty everything out. So just give us how about five seconds. This is what the garage looks like when it's all cleared out. You can see the back of the toilet. This is all of our storage space. And then on the right side is our electrical where our batteries sit. This side is where our water tank sits. We've got a 30 gallon water tank. We've got a small water pump. Pumps the water from our water tank to our sink and also out to our shower, which conveniently hooks up to the side of the door. A handy dandy shower curtain which then drapes between both of these doors shower slat thing to stand on it's a little crowded when you get under here but i have to show you the electrical on this side we've got our batteries so this pops up like this so you get a quick viewing angle of our inverter if i pop up this one right here then you get a view of the whole shebang which includes two 200 amp hour batteries a thousand watt inverter right here is our solar charge controller which manages our power from the solar panels. And we also charge our batteries from the alternator. So whenever we're running the car, we can be charging up our batteries, which is something I just recently fixed. I'm very happy about it. Now for the exciting news. We are launching a Patreon site. And what that means basically is it's a site where we offer exclusive member content, early access to our videos, and a number of other perks in exchange for a monthly subscription, kind of like Netflix or Hulu, like another account that you hold. 
So if you're someone who's been following us for a long time, maybe you just jumped on, but you're really enjoying the content that we're putting out, we would really love if you could support us. This will go directly to supporting our road trip and hopefully our goal of going to every national park in the continental United States. It's a big feat that we've taken on, so any bit would really, really help. We're independent artists and we're not sponsored by any big companies. We put a lot of our own blood, sweat, and tears as well as our own money into these videos. Aaron spent over 450 hours editing these videos and we put out about a thousand minutes of content so far onto YouTube. Just nearly a hundred videos. So if you'd like to support us, sign up on Patreon. We have three different tiers there that you could join. And even at this time, maybe you're not interested in joining Patreon, just hitting that subscribe button and giving us a thumbs up if you like our videos really does help. Thanks so much for the support and we'll see you in the next episode.